this is our family. Um, when our daughter Nina was three years old, my husband Nate and I decided to take her to Thailand. As soon as we got off the plane, it was very obvious by all the cell phone cameras flashing that many people had never seen a family quite like ours before. And in many of the small towns, we actually stopped traffic. Took the drivers like honking, people were looking at us, and uh, <laughs> everyone wanted to know how we had become a family. We quickly learned that explaining adoption in Thailand without speaking Thai is very challenging. <laughs> <laughs> and after many failed attempts, we finally had a situation that, that worked out. Um, we were at the foot of a temple, and this gentleman came up to me and, in broken English, um, pointed to, to Sally and said, your baby girl here, looking at our family. I thought for a moment, I thought, OK, how can I explain this in a way that might make sense? And I remembered a poem that we had read when we first had uh, adopted our daughter. And it said, not flesh of my flesh, nor bone of my bone, but still miraculously my own. Never forget for a single minute, you didn't grow under my heart, but in it. And so I looked at him, and I pointed to my belly and said, no baby here, baby here. And he smiled, and he bowed. And I could see that he got it. That he could understand that even though our family hadn't been created in a traditional way, that we were still a family. And so we're really excited to talk to you today about our journey of building our family through open adoption and the lessons on love that we've learned through that process. So what is open adoption? When information and or contact is shared between an adoptee's biological and adoptive families before and or after placement of the child. Now, this is not to be confused with co-parenting. In an open adoption, the adoptive parents are the legal parents of the child. And open adoption can take many forms. Sometimes it's just having information of who each other is. Other times it's sharing uh, photos and um, stories. Sometimes it's contact through email. And sometimes it's contact through actual visits. In our case, we met both of our children's birth parents before they were born, our children were born. And we keep in contact through email, Facebook, and uh, occasionally visits as well. Now that you've had the official definition of open adoption, our family's definition is on the screen up here. Uh, it's two families loving a child and caring for her in different ways, one that grew her, one that parents her. Individuals and families forever joined to each other through the birth of a child and the choice to stay connected, to share love and to give that child the best life they can possibly have in their own way. So now that we've given you our definitions, our daughter, who we'll talk mo mostly about, our son is two and a half, our, son is five, our daughter is five and a half, um, she wanted to do a quick little spiel, so here's her 30 seconds. My name is Nina, and I'm five years old. Okay. And my favorite part of, of adoption is getting to have two birth moms and two brothers and two dads. <laughs> Hello, I'm over here. <laughs> Your favorite part is having two birth moms? You mean two of my moms? <laughs> you have two birth moms? No. I mean two. I mean uh, one a mom who takes care of a <laughs> <laughs> mom and a birth mom. <laughs> Five year old. <laughs> Both of our kids are very aware, our daughter in particular, that we are. Our life and our family is formed through an open adoption so that's really what that video is meant to illustrate love and connection and adoption that's kind of one of the first topics we have to talk about and we didn't come up with this idea but it's it's come close to our heart is that there's the um, adoption triangle and it's, it's just a representation of the relationships that are formed in an open adoption um, it's between the family the birth family and the adoptive child there's a relationship between every party in here and uh, throughout the journey of adoption and this child's life, um, that relationship can change. Um, just as an example, in our, in our daughter's life, uh, when she was born, she was very close to her birth family because obviously she'd spent nine months in, in her birth mother's womb and smells and sights and sounds were what she knew. Um, as time went on, um, then we became very close to her and, and we're still obviously in contact with her birth mother. Uh, so that relationship can change over time, but it's important to recognize that that relationship always exists. Um, one of the quotes we found that we really liked that represented something about this adoption triad or, or triangle is, an invisible red thread connects those who are destined to meet, regardless of time, place, 
or circumstance, the thread may stretch, tangle, but it will never break. So we have three kind of lessons we've brought to you today to kind of talk about, and we're going to give a little bit of information about each and then our own personal experience about what we've learned from that and love and adoption together. So our first idea or lesson is that just love is a process. Um, for us, um, we became what you might call an Insta family. Um, our process was uh, paperwork-wise, emotional-wise, and everything like that was, strangely enough, close to nine months. Um, but from the time we knew about our daughter and the time we were holding her in our hands was about 48 hours. Um, very, very quick. So that's what we mean by Insta family. Um, as we were leaving the hospital, which they discharged her early because she was doing so well, um, we were literally scooping formula off the wall and diapers because we didn't have any. And they had given us some. Um, as we went to our friend's house whom we were staying with, uh, my wife was discussing going to Target and leaving me with our daughter. And I looked at her with a stricken look on my face and realized I had no parenting <laughs> skills whatsoever. <laughs> um, so it was an experience. And really, the Insta family um, thing is, is unique in adoption. We don't have nine months to prepare uh, for that. And along with that, you know, we may have become an Insta family, but getting the feeling of being entitled to be parents took a little bit longer. Um, you know, when you go through an adoption process, it's different than having a, um, a baby in the biological way where, you know, when you give birth, nobody really questions your entitlement to be that parent, that child's parent. Um, in our case, you know, in adoption, you never know if a situation's going to work out or not, and when it does, you kind of have to change gears. Like, wow, we spent all this time wishing to be a family and hoping to be parents, and now we are, you know, and is this okay? Like, can we do this? And you really have to give yourself that time and space to open your heart and, and allow that love to come in, you know, because you spent so much time feeling angst about it. Um, and so really we found that it was from the day-to-day -day acts of being a parent, you know, changing diapers and feeding bottles and staying up all night, that finally, you know, after four nights of no sleep, you know, all right, I'm entitled now, you know. Um, this, this is my kid, you know. But I say that, but really it was a much longer process than that. And it's still the process that continues um, because, you know, society doesn't always see us as the real parents of our children. And, you know, we're constantly reminded of that, that we need to own that entitlement to be our child's parents. And that was a real process for us. Um, the other piece of this is, even when you adopt a child from birth, as we did, that baby comes with different experiences that aren't related to you. So, you know, our daughter had spent, like Nate said, nine months inside her birth mother's womb, listening to sounds and voices, different smells, tastes, movement. Um, and so when she came to us, we really had to get to know her and her us. And a funny example of that, we were driving home with her at three days old, and she's in the car, and she's crying uncontrollably. And uh, we tried everything, you know, shushing her, static on the radio, everything we'd read, you know, lullabies, music, nothing was working. So finally, Nate pulled out a rap CD that he had, popped it in, turned it up like as loud as he could. She calmed right down. <laughs> and we called her birth mother laughing, and she's like, oh, it's my favorite artist. I listen to that all the time. And so, you know, that was her experience. That was her calm or comfort. So you know, it took some time for all of us to get to know each other. And there's still moments like that, you know, that come up. And um, yeah, so it, was a, it really was a process to develop that deep, you know, love from all, from all sides. So the second lesson is that uh, adoption is a story of love and loss. You know, in adoption, love and loss are really intertwined. And it's important to recognize that relationship and that both of those emotions can happen really simultaneously. Um, one of the first lessons we had to deal with with this and continue to deal with is that in order to become a parent through adoption and to experience the joy and love of being a parent, other people have to suffer a loss. And one of those people is the person that you care about, you know, take in and becomes your heart, is your child. And whenever a child is placed in adoption, they suffer a loss. And the loss of being with their biological family, the loss of their connections, their roots, the loss of growing up like other people. You know, knowing where they came from. Um, in an open adoption, that is a little different because we do maintain a relationship, but it's still not the same. You know, the expectations that all of us have of knowing our ancestors and where we came from and great great grandfathers and all this, um, they don't have that. You know, so that's a piece you have to come to terms with. And there's some guilt and, and hard feelings around that, but um, it's something we had to handle. And as well as, as looking at our children's birth parents and, you know, watching them suffer through the loss of not parenting their child. And uh, even though they felt it was a good situation and all that, even though it turned out, it still, it still is something that you have to address and, and hold and know that it doesn't go away. 
um, for anyone in the triad and that it exists and it needs to have that space to exist. Um, the other thing is that these feelings of love and loss can occur simultaneously and at very unexpected moments. Um, one example for us, one day I was in the bathroom getting ready to do my hair. My daughter was in there and we were talking and adoption came up. I think we might have been preparing to go see her birth mother or something like that. And she said, Mommy, that's, I didn't grow inside of you, right? And I said, no, you didn't. You grew inside your birth mother. She goes, yeah, I know. She said, but are you my real mom? Because sometimes you feel like a babysitter mommy. And I felt like I'd been hit by a Mack truck. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that one until she was like 16, yelling down the hallway, you're not my real mom! You know? So you know, I wasn't expecting it from a four-year-old. <laughs> and uh, I, I had to took a breath, thank goodness. Um, and then I realized, you know, she wasn't trying to hurt my feelings or, or, or say something mean. She was just trying to figure out a situation that was complicated and a little confusing at first. Um, and that was okay. You know, it's okay to give her that space. So instead, I turned to her, smiled, and said, well, if that's the truth, I am not getting paid enough for this gig. <laughs> and she cracked up, you know, laughed, and we hugged, and then I went and took a walk and cried for like half an hour. Um, but, <laughs> but, you know, later I reconnected with her, and after I was calm and, had, you know, handled my own emotions, I reconnected with her, and I assured her that I'm not a babysitter, that I'm her mom. She has two real mothers. We're both in her life, in one way or another, either, you know, actually there or just, you know, there. Um, and that it's okay to feel confused. And it's okay to feel sad about adoption sometimes. And really gave her that space and myself that space to hold those two emotions simultaneously and just let them be. So the third lesson is that lovers ever expanding. You know, in, the, in adoption, there's infinite possibilities for love to expand and change, particularly within that adoption triangle we were talking about. And, uh, you know, when we first talked about open adoption, we were nervous about the idea of having a child's birth family in our lives. And I can remember the first time we met their birth mothers uh -huh. and talked on the phone. It was like the first date in high school, you know. <laughs> Everybody was so anxious and nervous and vulnerable. And, and it, was, it was interesting, you know, really different, kind of a trip. Um, but then I can remember when our children were born and um, looking at their birth mothers and uh, just feeling this tremendous love, you know, for this woman who created this child, grew this child, and now is placing them with us, you know, having this faith in us to raise this child in the way that they wanted them to be raised and give them opportunities that they didn't feel they could give them. And uh, it was really humbling, it was really humbling. Um, and it opened a channel of love that I hadn't expected, um, and neither one of us really had expected to feel that way, and just kind of showed us the way that love can expand and the incarnations that love can have in really different, different ways. Are there opportunities for love and connection with others in adoption has been kind of the other part that we didn't expect. Um, when our family came home with our first child, um, it's pretty obvious how we were forming our family. And um, in our circles of friends, um, a couple of our pretty close friends came forward and explained to us that they had been birth mothers in uh, previous not open adoption times. Um, so it was th that sort of experience as well as we get stopped at airports and people lean over and say, I formed my family through adoption. Or I'm um, adopted. Or yeah, something. and and our close, tight knit group of friends, is is probably close to fifty percent touched by adoption in some fashion or another. Some are adoptive parents, um, some were adopted themselves, some work in and around the adoption profession, um, and that's an area we didn't expect to find as much love and support, um, and we wouldn't have ventured into there. So. Where do we go from here? We continue to be a family. We're loving and adopting as we go. Um, we're teaching our kids that love is ever evolving, occurs in the most unexpected places, and that life is a journey. It can be painful and scary, but it is always worth it. Mm -hmm.